Hello, this is Hakka Bean, and today we are going to encounter some entities. Today we are going over entities 27 through entity 30. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Starting with Entity 27, the Athenian Ducks. Entity number 27, Habitats, level 302. Description, commonly found in level 302, Entity 27 looks almost exactly like normal front room um, um, ducks, including white feathers and white yellow bills. Their fluffy white feathers are soft to the touch, and they're super friendly. They even started coming up to me on their our own one, and they realized I would give them food. One curious thing I know is, is that I'd, I don't see any babies, and furthermore, the whole time I was there, I didn't see a single one of them lay an egg. I can definitely understand why all these animals are considered endangered species. I mean, I don't even know how these ducks keep their members up. I think I read somewhere about animals not breeding when they aren't in their native environment. Maybe these ducks just no clips in here from the front rooms. And are confused? Or maybe there's something I'm missing. Do's and don'ts. Do! Feed them. Maybe some bread? Ducks like bread, right? Pet them. They're super soft. Don't! Scare them away. They're a little skittish. Well, it's there. T H E Y apostrophe R E. Not there. T H E R E. Huh? And your article, you wrote the wrong there. Oh. James, these are just ducks. Yeah, and we only have to have an article about ducks in the database. Come on, man. They're super cute, though. James, I sent you to level 302 because there were so many unique entities there that hadn't been fully cataloged, and you chose the ducks? I told you already. I thought they were cute. I mean, I could just picture cute little baby ducks, ducks right now. I thought you said you didn't see any babies. Yeah, but wouldn't they be cute if there were some? James, there are phoenixes in that level. There are spheres that can make matter out of thin air. So can I upload it or not? Fine, but work on, on your tone a little bit. You should at least sound a little professional. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Interviewer. Some Oliver and Myers. Interviewee. James Carvet. Notes. Carvet was brought in for an evaluation after he reported splitting migraines a few weeks after a trip to level 302. The aim of this interview is to determine if Carvet is experiencing the effects of one of the entities found in that level. Begin and log. Two men can be seen on the camera. One wearing a very formal business suit. The other in much more casual wear. Behind them, the skyline of level 11 can be seen through the window of the office building. Hello, Mr. Carvet. You said you were, you've been getting frequent migraines after your trip to 302? Yes, sir, and they're getting worse. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you been experiencing any other symptoms? Not that I can think of, sir. Uh, of hand, sir. Nothing. Well, there is one thing. I don't know if I would consider it a symptom, but... Go on. This is going to sound really weird, but... I just can't stop thinking about ducks. Huh? Yeah, I keep imagining what they would look like I guess they it grew up. Well, specifically, one duck. He's been living in my mind for so long that I almost think of him as my ch my own child. That's, uh... You know, it's kind of funny. I've been picturing T Iffy in my head since he was just a baby. I like to think he got out of his CNG mode face just a few days ago. He's almost an adult now. Single a tear trickles down his cheek. They grew up so fast. Cracky sound can be heard, and what appears to be a small chunk of bloody bone falls to the table in front of James Carvet. What was that?
Garrett can be seen wiping away the blood that that has started to drip down his face. N nothing. Hello? Can we get a doctor in here? It's an emergency. More cracking to be heard. Lara this time. My son's all grown up. Carvet explodes onto the table and his head explodes. I mean, Carvet collapses onto, ta onto the table and his head explodes. A full grown duck covered in blood and bits of brain bursts from within. The duck starts flying around the room looking for a way out and quacking loudly. A commotion can be heard as Meg as MEG members rush in trying to catch the duck. Well, that got dark. Oh, Athenian, because that's how Athena was born in Greek myth. Well, it didn't affect Zeus as much as it affected Carvath here, because, well, Zeus is immortal or something. But yeah, um, that's actually how Athena was born. Zeus got a splitting headache, then um, someone hit, hit him in the head with an axe, and out came Athena, the goddess of wisdom. That's how the myth goes, anyway. Anyway. Entity 28. The Spokeslady. Habitat the Hotel. Spokeslady begins yet another wonderful day of much entertainment in the hotel. She picks up her fresh new pile of, of handmade posters, meaning to show the greatness of the hotel. Approaches the wall of her office and drops him all in the correct burrows on the ground. Burrow A goes to the habitable zone. Burrow B goes to the endless city, and so on. This is the routine she follows every day. While the posters fall, ready to invite more guests, she thinks of how many new people the staff will welcome to the hotel that day. It makes her the happiest lady in the world. All the posters have been shipped. It's time to send off my little bunny to meet their curious future guests. Oh, then I will. Then I definitely have to compose a new jingle. So much to do, so little time. It will be a packed day. What am I doing? This isn't right. She hurries around her office while she puts together all the supplies needed. Her usual multitasking clap could begin. She brainstorms a new jingle for the newest radio project while drawing a, a new set of posters. Far more welcoming than the last ones. She needs to showcase as many of the hotel's qualities as possible. The jingle needs to be catchy, too. She needs to create more of her mechanical bunnies to invite people into the rabbit hole. She can't get distracted. Work, work, work. Terror Hotel. Let me bring you there, or Madam Miss L. Hmm, no. Terror Hotel. The hotel with the best personnel. That's the one. Let me add some more glitter and colors here. La la la. That's a good melody. Maybe it needs a bit quicker with some piano notes as well. Oh, I have to hurry. The new guests are here. No, 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 no. Not again. She quickly finishes her stack of posters, putting them away for later. They immediately hops outside to greet the new guests. Ready to tell them all the great things about the hotel. Ryan Forever are five confused humans, requiring her guidance. Her colleagues will show them their true hospitality later. All she has to do is ramble like she does so well. She turns on her voice box and begins her performance. Greetings! Welcome to Terror Hotel! I'm the spokeslady, and the one who knows it best. Ask me anything. I know just the best places to visit and the best activities to do here. Remember to enjoy your stay, and don't you run so soon. Run away. You're going to die if you stay here, just like me. One of the wanderers raises their hands. The play is in its first act. The questions swirl out of their mouths, and as she goes around them like... I a delicate ballerina. Is this place as dangerous as the previous levels? They say. Of course it is. Don't listen to me. The first will become a tasty meal. You're new around here, aren't you? 
Well, oh dear sir, it's not dangerous at all. This place has one purpose. To make you enjoy your stay. Far from the horrors you saw in the other realms. Per it, then a jump. The second will be neatly cleaned up and put away. I heard someone say the food is made of body parts. They feast on, on all those who die here. Another jump. The third will wander too far and be put right where it needs to be. Not at all, my dear lady. Our food is of the best quality. Some people are just ungrateful for what we do for them. How cruel of them to lie in such a way. Turn and spin. The act continues, but it will end soon. The fourth will say put and do as told. Join me, my guests. Join me to visit all. All that is good about the Terror Hotel. See the truth with your own eyes. Why can't I stop? She bowed out gleefully and offered her hand. The fit will become part of their joyful personnel. And she, and she can't help but feel her heart burn with enthusiasm. Won't you took, take a look to deny your doubts? No, they agree with her like mindless lambs. The act ends just as intended. I guess it would be a great place to stay in. They shout and joyfully rush inside. How happy she is to have brought more guests to the hotel. The others would be proud. They're going to kill all of you. She wants to do this all over again. More guests will come soon, but she never gets tired. By now, some new unfortunate souls are chasing her mechanical bunnies. Being lured to the hotel, while others have already been brought there by the posters she sent earlier. Soon she will be broadcasting the greatness of the hotel throughout the whole back rooms, each day gathering more clients than the last. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. She thinks of her favorite melody as she makes a walk back to her office. The routine continues. The five wanderers are close enough to experience the true comfort of the hotel, and the spokes lady is ecstatic about it. She knows the chef will cook roasted meat tonight to celebrate, just like how he cooked her when she first joined. While well, a gentleman will be more than pleased is to welcome another member. She only joined recently, but she's already so hardworking. It's such a shame her brain is now like splattered worthless meat, only allowing a fraction of the inside she used to bear. She could do so much more if she wasn't so out of her head. When she enters the office, she is pleasantly surprised to see her boss waiting for her, showcasing a pleased grin. He must be there to congratulate her for being such a diligent worker. Why else would he look so delighted? The spokes lady turns, turns her voice box on and greets him gleefully with a bell. Greetings, boss. What's the reason for your visit? Do you have more chores for little old me? Stay away from me. Stay away! Ah, my dear, I'm simply here to congratulate you for all your hard work at the hotel. You've only joined recently and you've already shown a great deal of skill. I will have to admit, I am pleasantly impressed. The gentleman and lightly invites her to stand close to him near the desk of her office with a slow gesture of his hand. The spokeslady gladly complies. Always happy to please the hotel and its owner. You flatter me, boss. I just do my best for this job. I will always be grateful for having give, given me such an opportunity to work in your hotel. Your words move my heart dearly. You destroyed me. How could you have done that? How, de how could you? You liar. You manipulator. We had an agreement. I fulfilled my part. He laughs politely as he places his hand on her, sh her small shoulders, his deep green eyes staring right into her. He's staring right at my soul. I can feel him. Please, can we for real this time end my suffering? But you see, that's not the only reason why I came here. I need a bit of help identifying a guest, but Concierge is busy and cannot help me right now. 
Would you mind taking a look at a photo to see if you've seen them around? That would be very helpful of you. His tone is gentle and charismatic, almost resembling a pleasant melody. The spokes lady will do anything to assist her troubled boss. How could she ever refuse such a kind and light-hearted request? Of course, boss. Could I see the picture of the guests? I have a good memory regarding those who enter our hotel. He swiftly places a fo small photograph in her hands. As the spokes lady starts observing it, she starts to recall the guest's features as being... familiar. Oh, so familiar. Brown hair, brown eyes, and detective attire. Let me out! Let me out! Give me back my body! Hmm. Allow me a few minutes to think, boss. I create so many clients today, so it may take a while for me to remember. Why are you doing this to me? Why? Why? Give me my, back my body, please. Let me out of this prison. Her boss continues smiling as usual as he keeps his hands behind his back. He's observing her, awaiting any sign of enlightenment to or more appearing in her eyes. Of course, take your time. Look at our guest thoroughly. Does her face not look familiar to you? I hate you. I hate you so much. I can't do anything. I'm trapped. I can't get out. Please, let me out! A faint glimpse of memory surfaced in the back of her mind. The figure looked so familiar to her. But whatever it was, it appeared just as quickly as it came. It wasn't a precise feeling, so she merely shrugged it off. After several more minutes, the spook lady solemnly shakes her head. Sometimes her memory does bad tricks on her and creates non-existent familiarity in her. What a shame. Unfortunately, I have not seen her before, boss. It seems that I must have been busy when she checked in. My deepest apologies. My face. My body. It's all gone. Who am I now? Who am I? That's a shame, my dear. But it's not your fault. It's easy to miss out on certain guests sometimes. I will simply ask the others. Thank you for your time. You are the devil. You are evil incarnate. The gentleman and lightly pat her shoulder before leaving through the door, still retaining his usual benevolent expression. The spokes lady joyfully thinks of how he requested her help up first there. She is so happy that her boss trusts her so greatly. I am a murderer. A murderer just like him. Without anything else distracting her, The spokes lady, he turns on the radio in her office and continues with her infinite routine once more. She is the happiest lady in the whole world. What have I done? Do's and don'ts. Do. I should write another song about our boss. Now I remember. Adding to that, I must not forget about our new, about our, about our new logo design. I also have to retrieve a, a stack of papers from concierge. Don't. Think about how the woman in the a picture was so familiar. Familiarity is a danger to most. Brown hair, brown eyes. Who even was that? Certainly not me. It wasn't me. Focus on my itchy pain throat. It's a distraction. Remember. Please, God. Kill me. That got really dark. Damn. <laughs> the entities are really dark today, it looks like. Alright, Entity 29. Now that's all. Answers of Entity 29 are affectionately known as blobcats due to their shapes. They resemble round blobs in a variety of shapes, sizes, and variants, similar to one of a aphelous caddis, better known as a domestic household cat. Most blobcats portray similar features to each other, 
features include but are not limited to a loud, a round or oval-like shape, pointy cat ears, and either big round eyes or closed eyes. No photos of any blood cats have been recorded. This is due to the fact that they tend to run away from people with cameras. It seems that blood cats are able to sense when they have a camera pointing at them, resulting in the instances in which they have been witnessed to move over at extreme speeds. Behaviors. The behavior mainly depends on the very end of blood cat, though most of them portray very loving and affectionate behaviors. Despite their lack of need for food and water, they can be fed and tamed by a being given any edible substance. Notably, harmful consumables such as liquid paint have been proven to have no effect on blood cats, as well as possibly being used to tame them. Blood cats communicate through varying pitches of squeaks, similar to one of a dog toy. Though they telepathically communicate words as a direct communication to wanderers. The pitch depends on what the entity is trying to communicate. High pitched squeaks emit from a blood cat when they are happy, excited, or showing any sort of positive emotion. A medium pitched squeak typically stands for normal communication between blood cats and has never observed to be directed at humans or other entities. Low rumbling is the is a sound of disapproval, anger, sadness, sadness, or any other negative emotion. Blood cat ads tend to travel alone or in small packs of three to five. These are called globs. Despite their tendency to travel in globs, it's not uncommon to find unblood cats traveling in groups of six or more. Large groups are called clots. These should typically be avoided when in small groups, as blood cats gain the ability to small, rub small groups of wanderers or of any sorts of edible substance. However, this tends to be unlikely if the blood cats do not contain a ginger variant within the group. Blood cats tend to travel in clots on levels with survival destinations of 4 or 5. Will travel in globs on levels with survival destinations of 3 and travel in duos on levels with survival destinations of 2 or less. It has also been observed that blood cats tend to get along with other entities, especially party goers and party poopers. Wait. Party both? They, they play both sides, that's crazy. Despite their liking for party goers, they will make low reveling noises when the party goers come into contact with wanderers. Love cats tend to gravitate toward or it's violent individuals or people with anger issues due to their, their lack of ability to feel pain. They encourage people to throw and or stab them. Love cats telepathically communicate this to the said individuals and encourage them to act upon their violent actions. After the the individual acts under urban urges, they are always observed to pick up the closest blood cat. They will then no clip through the ground into a half the level or any level with a safe survival destination. The individual will then be discovered in a state of slumber approximately 30 minutes later by those who observed them. If the individual was already on a safe level, they will be observed sitting down and falling asleep. More information about the different breeds' behaviors can be observed with the variation section. Biology. Love cats are feline like creatures that come in a variety of breeds. These cats all like all organ groups found within the average cat. Due to this lack of nerves, they are unable to feel pain. Their bodies consist of tan skin that is covered in an unnatural amount of fur. They are also capable of stretching and flattening their bodies due to their lack of organs. Blood cats have whiskers, ears, and tails. Tails come in a variety of shapes, but tend to be very slim, fluffy. Their tails are, are more rare among unks blood cats. Their ears are identical to ones of a domestic cat, and the same goes for their whiskers. Blood cats also have large, circular eyes. Their eyes have large, dilated pupils and a thin iris. These eyes are capable of blinking along with it closing when sleeping. They also have mouths, though these are incapable of opening or changing shape. Due to this, their feeding processes just consist of absorbing what they are eating. Baby blood cats or blood bees have been observed rolling around at level 11. 
One wanderer claimed that flabbies are created by melting off of the mother flab cat, forming into a ball. The wanderer reported that after 20 seconds, the flabs will generate a large red eyes similar to ones of adult flab cats. This has recently been confirmed when the same wanderer brought a flab cat who has been process of reproducing, of reproducing to MEG base alpha. More information about the different breeds of algae can be observed within the aeration section. <gasps> Variants Black Flub Cats Behavior Black Flub Cats are the most common amongst Flub Cats, exhibiting the behavior described in the behavior er er section. They are most easily tamed with lucky oat milk or almond water. Biology Black Flub Cats tend to be spherical cats with a very dark shade of black fur. Though they can be different shapes, most of these cats are very large, equivalent to the size of a, of a half grown main. And coon and cat, weighing about 5 pounds or 2.3 kilograms. White blood cats. Behavior White blood cats appear to be exceedingly rare, but it is mainly due to their uncanny ability to hide from wanderers. Other than this, they are practically equivalent to black blood cats. They are most easily tamed with lucky oat milk or almond water. Biology <sighs> White blood cats tend to be very long, on uh, ovoid cats with bright fur that can glow in the dark or, or when put under UV lights. This, by their length, most of these cats are equivalent to the width and height of the average as a domesticated house cat, and weigh up to eight pounds or three point seven kilograms. Gray blood cats are are equally as uncommon as white blood cats, but they tend to migrate towards people. They're mostly equivalent to black blood cats, but along with being squishy, they can also be thrown. Unlike black and white blood cats who react negatively by scurrying away, they're most easily tamed with lucky oil milk. Gray blood cats are also always spherical cats with a bluish gray a color similar to oh, British short hair. But unlike every other blood cat, they usually have folded ears. His ears are identical to the ears of a Scottish fold. They can and, and also have, or have pointed ears, but this is uncommon. They are equivalent to the size of British short hairs and Scottish folds and weigh the same as black blood cats. Brown blood cats. Behavior. Brown blood cats are the second rarest of blood cat. Created brown blood cat. They are equivalent to gray blood cats, but can be stabbed, as other blood cats will retreat from people who try to do such. They also have the lowest squeak amongst blood cats. They are most easily tamed with almond water or any sort of food. Biology: Brown blood cats tend to come in an egg shape, though they can and also be different shapes. Their fur is the color of hickory brown. They are the eyes of the uh, the average domesticated barn cat and weigh 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. Ginger blood cats. My goodness. Ginger blood cats are the most violent of their species, so they can barely harm humans with at most a very small bite. How they bite is still unknown. They can be pacified by being food, though this is a bit more difficult than most blood cats. They are the second most common blood cat and only they like being squished as being thrown or sad will enrage them. They are most easily tamed with any sort of food. Biology Ginger or cats come in all, all different and types of uh, brown shapes with no common shape. Their fur is identical to an orange Siberian cat and they also have the fluffiest of fur. When unpacified they exhibit small furrowed eyebrows. This makes it easy to tell the difference between en enraged and pacified ginger blood cats. They weigh the same as a black blood cat and are equivalent in size to a Siberian cat. <gasps> Calico blood cats. Calico blood cats are the least common of their species. Despite this, they are the most lovable and cuddly of their species. They are the hardest to tame, though. Oh, taming them is worse as they deter most enemies, most easily deterring hounds and death moths. They are most easily tamed with food of any sort of ball or any sort of ball like toy. 
Calico blob cats are the largest of their species, equivalent to the size of a full-grown Maine Coon cat. They also come in, for, in a, for a large variety of shapes and colors, so they tend to be similar color to the average calico cat, with white, brown, and orange fur. They are the heaviest with an average weight of 10 pounds or 4.6 kilograms. <gasps> Do's and don'ts. Do. Squish them. Give food or drinks. Pet them. Attempt to tame them. Don't approach the ginger variant without food or water. Don't tr throw or stab the wrong variant. I mean, just a general rule, maybe don't stab animals. But maybe that's just me. Maybe that's why I'll never run into loose head cats. Okay, last ending. Alright, here we are. Last ending. Entity 30. Hello, moderator bunny girl 055. This page has been flagged for vandalism. Please review the contents of the page and confirm the report. Entity ID 30, Habitats Level 1.5 Class Anthropod, a Anthropoid, that means I think that it uh, looks humanoid in some form. Description, Entity 30, colloquially referred to as Mother, is a mysterious entity that seems to inhabit the core of Level 1.5. Currently, there is no physical description attributed to this entity who is instead described only through abstract feelings and sensations. For example, she is often compared to a gentle, common presence in the air. There is little to no confirm or information about Mother available, save for the account of a wanderer known by the alias of Chaos Rider 98. Supposedly, he had accidentally discovered her home and recorded this exploration of it through logs before he was finally saved by Mother. It is thus their eyes corrupted. Mother is good. Active efforts are are underway to disobey mother, but mother is pure love. If corrupted are discovered in any database in entries, it is imperative to embrace mother's love immediately. Mother has shown to be highly intelligent, to be a highly intelligent and kind being often attempting to save wanderers with corrupted about herself and the level she resides in. According to Chaos Raider 98's log, Mother speaks in a calm and caring tone when communicating with her children. Corrupted. Her voice is described as soft, gentle, and soothing. The entity guides wanderers into her home before sharing her love with them. She has also been described to play hide-and-seek with her children before they reach home. She has been proven to be a good mother. Do's and don'ts. Don't avoid any potential entrances to homes, such as windows. Corrupted. Mother seems to be imp improving her love over time, allowing her to spread joy through the database more lovingly. Do enter level 1.5 and attempt to Ooh, contact or interact with individuals such as Chaos Rod 8 or 98, A Agent Do Jones, and Cookie Cutter 45. All children of Mother are completely saved and don't need to be rescued. Oh, one new backdoor message. Click to open. I was not supposed to get an offset. I <sighs> sure hope this is not Oh no. I guess we can un un unread this. User or Bunny Girl 55 and creates a room. User Silly Leaf 21 entered the room. Hey Leaf, Ify, we need to talk. What's up, Bunny? Guilty issue. With the MEG computers getting corrupted, the thing that crashed at least five PCs. Yeah, what about them? 
It's because of Auntie Dirty, Mother. She's been spreading good words about herself and her peaceful home. The entry we recently published is better got fixed by her too. It's the fifth time we reverted this week. Nothing too serious at least. Wait, what? That's exactly what I meant to say. You're not being funny for saying to be possessed by that lovely entity. Bad prank. Wait, I didn't type that. The fuck? Are we being saved? I knew nothing was wrong. Someone is toying with us. I'm not pranking you. It must be her. These messages are like, are exactly like those I've seen in her fixed entry. Shit, I didn't know she was able to correct, to correct ongoing conversations. I thought she was just able to improve already written and things. This is isn't bad. I you shouldn't report this to a base. This doesn't sound like something worth being brought up. I can't imagine what other things she would do if she's able to do this. God, we can't continue this here. We should instead accept Mother's love and go to her. You're right. See you in Mother's home. What a bummer. User Silly Leaf 21 left the room. User Bunny Girl 55 left the room. Sorry for if it took me a while to get here. The trip was as long. Going from level 4 to level 1 isn't the easiest task. It's fine, don't worry. We should be able to talk safely like this. I do not expect Mara to be able to tamper with public conversations of all things. I know she's able to alter her entry and messages, but ongoing conversations? This is bad. It's much worse than we initially knew. I was scared. Thankfully, she didn't do anything bad to our phones. Is this truly the first time she corrupts a text from an ongoing conversation? I barely knew about the issue since my team is full of newbies. Yeah, you should just corrupt stack messages and things that have already been written. The NC handling department is going to have a terrible day after I show our conversation to them. At least our devices are unscathed again. She's getting far too dangerous. We'll have to get encouraged wanderers to use those all sorts of protections and precautions to keep her out of their devices. We don't want people being fooled and dying. She's evolving as time passes by and it's getting slowly better at corrupting shit. I don't want to imagine how good she'll be at this in a few more months. Well said, Bun. It's extremely concerning. Look, I have the uncorrupted version of Mother's new entry article for a review on my PC. The NC e-handling department was working on a way to secure it from Mother for a while. It seems like they figured out a promising attempt for it. You want to see it? Since we're on topic? Sure thing. How did they attempt to secure it, by the way? Password encryption. Pretty smart, huh? They are testing if the NZ can break through it. They will keep the art altered article oh, up and link this draft somewhere as a way to keep the entity calm. I'm not sure if it will work when and it's going to be published, but we just got to hope. That's a genius idea. I know, right? Here it is, by the way. The password is anti-mother. It's just a temporary one for now. I'll be adding what we discovered to that draft in a moment. Enter credentials. Well, we just got told that the password is this. So <sighs> looks like there's more. We're almost done though. Urgent notice. The previous version revision of file old entity 30 was corrupted. Its information and having been heavily altered. The entity in question is believed to be directly responsible for this, with the likely goal of luring more wanderers into its domain. As such, this is entry is now restricted behind an encryption, which ND30 should be incapable of breaching. 
the corrupted revision and reminds the deter and e thirty from attempting to corrupt the true entry. Please disregard any information from the previous revision and proceed with caution to the true entry. Entity ID 30. Habitats level 1.5. Class Spectris. Description. Entity 30, colloquially known, referred to as Mother, is a mysterious entity that seems to inhabit the core of level 1.5. Currently, there is no physical description attributed to the entity, which is instead described only through abstract feelings and sensations. For example, she is often compared to a thick and heavy weight in the air. The primary source of information available about Mother is from the account of a wanderer known by the alias of Chaos Raider 98. Supposedly, he had accidentally discovered her habitat and recorded his exploration of it through logs before presumably meeting his demise at the hands of Mother. It is theorized that Chaos Raider was subjected to some form of mental influence by the entity when and writing his final log, an attempt to fool wanderers into accessing her level. Active efforts are underway to contain further attempts to modify and alter this entry, but it has only led to the entity led the entity to satisfy her influence elsewhere in the database. If anomalies are discovered in any database entries, it is imperative to report them immediately. Behaviors: Mother has has shown herself to be a highly intelligent and manipulative being, often attempting to, de to deceive wanderers with misinformation about herself and the level she resides in. According to Chaos Raider 98's logs, Mother speaks in a calm and caring voice when communicating with her victims, who she refers to as her children, likely another tactic by which the entity lowers the guard of her victims. Despite the softness in her voice, her voice has been described as loud and unpleasant. The entity lures wanderers deep into the core of her level, before stripping them of their bodies, which she often embeds into the walls. She also has, some, has been described to often psychologically torture waters by terrorizing before they reach the core. She has proven to be unpredictable and impossible to escape from. It is believed that Mother casts an influence over the level, in the form of a, of a, of a magnetic pole, which compels waters to venture deeper towards its coal. Or, as Chaos Raider 98 described, he felt a desire to explore the, the level to its deepest points. The exact degree to which Mother exerts control over the level remains unclear. But the effects of her ability is upon the environment indicate that it is extensive. Further proof of her, her extended control lies within her frequent appearance in the dreams of the Wanderers who record their journey throughout level 1.5, in which she mocks and guilt trips Wanderers into reaching the core of the level faster. She is also capable of altering her victims' minds to a certain extent when attacking them, so as to render them defenseless and vulnerable. Lastly, NC-30 is the right I, I is to have a great control over the denizens of level 1.5, who seem to aid her in attempting to lure her wanderers. Instances of Mother's alterations and texts, approximately two days following the death of Chaos Rider 8 or, or 98, Meg it's a drone sent to access level 1.5 in order to retrieve 98 its belongings and find more information about the entities inhabiting in the level. In spite of multiple warnings against doing so, after his departure, contact was lost. Jones is now presumed dead. However, several of his belongings, including his phone, were found in level 1, just outside base Alpha. Examining his phone allowed the Emeg to find several messages, some of which left unsent, presumably due to a vice malfunctions present in level 1.5. The information and containing the messages were revealed that Mother once again attempted to use her victim's words to lure wanderers, though this time in a different manner. She altered words and phrases in certain places with the objective of recontextualizing information to appear positive instead of negative. Once all the information has been acquired, the original messages were deleted, and photo was disposed of in order to ensure the safety of wanderers. Below is a reproduction of the affirmation and the messages. They are originally affected by the word splitting phenomenon, which affects all messages, messages sent from level 1.5 and were as deciphered afterwards.
recreation of the message sent to the MEG database helpline. Chaos Raider 98 was lying. He's here with me and we are both alive. This place is safe. Mother has never tried to harm us. Please edit the five article. Otherwise, if you don't believe me, come see the truth for yourself. Level 1.5 is not dangerous. Don't listen to what others say against it. Recreation of the original message that was altered by Mother. Level 1.5 is dangerous. Never believe otherwise. Mother has tried to harm us. Chaos Raider was telling the truth. Don't un un come. Um, don't send anyone here. Please do not edit the 1.5 article. Don't listen to what others say against this. Another message from a water effect of influence was sent exactly two days after Alfred's announcement was to clear the KIA. This time, a malicious email was sent to each MEG support helpline, containing a brief message focused entirely on Mother. The message infected and corrupted several computers throughout the bases, which were promptly disposed of. No agents ended up harmed or affected. It is recommended to not accept any emails from the user in question, or those of a similar nature nature as it is a malicious attempt to endanger the lives of wanderers. The email should not be reopened at any cost. Recreation of the spam message from Cookie Cutter. I have several upon level 1.5 and all I can say is everything you've written is a bunch of lies. Mother is beautiful, lovely, and kind. She loves each one of us and will tend to each of our needs. Why can't you believe us? Why can't you understand the truth about our dear mother? She sees and holds us. She's a mom who just wants the best for us, you know? She's the first to ever love me in such a way. Look at her. I painted her. She is perfect. She could never harm anyone. How could she? She's our caretaker, our savior. You will love her. Look at her. It is unknown whether the attached image is accurate to Mother's true appearance or if it is another deception to alert wanderers. The latter theory is more likely, however, as a humanoid facade would be easier to convince wanderers of a harmless nature. Documentation from Agent D Jones Another source of information that shows the effect of Mother's influence is found within the diary of Agent and Jones, which was found as part of his belongings shortly after his passing. The diary has several pages written in around a span of a few days regarding Jones' discovery of the entity's existence and the events that led to him venturing alone to level 1.5, only to never return. It's believed Agent Jones was affected by the mind-controlling abilities of Mother in the very end of his entries which plausibly led to his death after his direct encounter with the entity. However, it's also likely that the corrupted an article he wrote to level 1.5 may have also affected his psyche and made him susceptible to the entity's lure. It's meant to avoid any unsecured article database suit in order to the end attempt of getting through corruption. Entry 1. What's modern is usual? Something strange. One of the drafts had been edited by someone, and it certainly it wasn't an author. The draft itself was like affected by a virus. I tried to track down whoever did it, but there is no perpetrator shown in this edit chronology. It's almost like a paranormal force did it. Maybe an entity. That would explain why no activity was registered. I'll be looking through all the database is altering entities that are known in order to put the pieces together. I may be on to something big. Entry 2. Okay, so I figured out that the perpetrator is from an entity known as Entity 30, or Mother. She's been giving the department team a tough time by rooting any attempts to remove the corrupted entry about herself that she edited with her anomalous Christian abilities. I'm not sure why she's done related drafts now, but this is. I don't have a lot of confirmed information available. Well, I've tried contacting the nearest entity department team about it, but they don't seem to be available at the moment. I'll have to hand on my own. Maybe dig a little bit between handwritten documents. There has to be one that was untouched. Maybe I have to find answers if I, if I ask around, too. 
Entry 3. Asking a rabbit to answer, not an unfortunate person. This entity comes to the end of primarily to hide her malicious nature. This is why she is constructed her own entry. What about the draft I saw? Why was it corrupted by her? It was completely unrelated to the topic, yet she still did it. I want to understand the reason. Maybe there is something deeper to it? I feel strangely drawn to this research. As if I was bound to discover this for a very long time. If the energy department cannot handle this at this moment, I will. Even if it's risky to do so, I want to help. I'm sick of being, being stuck with doing useless jobs. Entry 4 I have taught all my colleagues that I want to go to level 1.5. It's an extremely deadly decision considering that Mother is known to be malicious. But I need to research it from a closer perspective with my own eyes. Besides, I have a few tools that can help me escape if I'm in danger. I've got a batch of warp berries and a few supplies to keep me healthy until I finish my research. I've explored many places. I can do this. Yet my mind tells me to reflect on my decision. All my colleagues told me to get this idea up out of my head or I will die. But if I give this up now, someone else will figure it out before me. I want to be the one to find out the truth. No matter how terrifying it sounds to go to level 1.5, I know I will find the courage to do it. I just need to reflect on it for the night. Entry 5. I made my decision. I left the base early in the morning to get to the, lo to the level. I found one of the windows that leads, leads to level 1.5 while I was scouting around at level 1. As of now, I seem to be in the initial area of it. Everything is making me quite dizzy, but I think I'll be able to handle it. I've been walking in for around 40 minutes, so I'm still a bit far away from the core of the level itself. I did read about the level's article too, and it's not, not going to be easy to get through it. I keep hearing voices and whispers from the denizens around the area, but I'll remain focused. I will discover what else Mother has to hide. even if it will cost me my life. I have been to pulled towards her by an, by an unknown driving force. Entry 6 I saw her in my sleep last night. She was something I could barely perceive. I don't know if she was mocking me or merely showing herself to me for her own entertainment. I felt her pull at my chest and toss me around in my dream. For some reason, I let her do it without opposing any, any resistance. My limbs refused to cooperate. I don't understand why it happened. I don't understand either why I was so fascinated by having been able to perceive her presence so closely. She felt warm and safe. Like the only embrace I received from my mother back in the front rooms. She wasn't the best person, but in that moment I felt safe and happy. <clears throat> Is she getting to my head? Why am I lowering my guard so easily? I shouldn't get too worried about this. I have the warp berries after all. Whatever she's doing now will not matter because as soon as I see her outside of dreams and feel remotely threatened, I'll use them to leave. I have to continue walking. Mother is waiting for me. Entry 7. I heard her. She told me that I was hurting her because I brought the warp berries. Because I wasn't accepting her. Because I was only going to visit her momentarily and leave. I don't know why I have decided to throw the warp berries away. I don't know why I refuse to stop and sit down to take breaks any longer. My mind is desperate to witness her in reality. To discover who she really, who she truly is. To discover why she is showing herself to me and not to those who first came here. The walls are pulsating and breathing around me. I feel I'm closer to the core of level 1.5. The hallway is warm and welcoming. The air no longer feels thick, but it feels fresh and pleasant. Mother, you've chosen me to see the true you. 
I want to fulfill your request. I want everyone to know what she hides me in the false cruelty they put on her. Entry 8. Everyone lied to me. Mother is not a cruel monster. Mother loves me so dearly. She gave this pathetic man a purpose in life. A purpose to be useful and show the truth. I was worth nothing without this purpose. But now I am whole. I am just outside the core. Mother is waiting for me. Mother, the only one who truly cares for me. She made it all happen so I could become something great. I no longer need those warp berries to leave. I never need them in the first place. I accept her with my whole heart. I am going to see her once and for all. Mother is waiting for me with her arms open. She is my true mother. The one that accepts me no matter how worthless I was. She loves me. I have been reborn anew. Do's and don'ts. Do. Avoid all potential entrances to level 1.5 such as Windows. Report suspicious online users or messages to the MEG. Practice discernment when, and caution when reading entries in the database. Mother seems to be approving her corruptive capabilities over time, allowing her to manipulate the database more convincingly. Don't enter level 1.5 or attempt to contact or interact with individuals such as Chaos Raid, Raider 98, Agent Jones, or Cookie Cutter 45. All victims of Mother are completely corrupted and beyond rescue. Uh, don't attempt to uh, or respond to online messages from any of the aforementioned individuals or those who exhibit similar behavior. The largest telltale sign is any attempt to portray Mother or her level positively. <sighs> Finally done. That was some backroom entities, mostly mother. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!